What's up, y'all? Trey be dipping in the building. You know what time it is. So, today's video, I'm doing something unique, I guess. It's been done before. Um, I don't think it's been done in the Prelude community or it really typically in the Honda community in general. So, this is going to be an interesting one. So, stay tuned. So, um, one of the, like, i probably say one of the more common topics in the turbo Honda community is uh, running hot slash overheating. And there's some basic things that you can run down the list. Um, but let's say you check down that whole list like you've you've properly burped the system. Um, you're running the right amount of coolant uh, to water ratio. In my case, um, I've tried products like water wetter and purple ice, which are super coolant additives and I've gotten the fan shroud and upgraded the fans and like nothing works. But yeah, if you have a, a high horsepower daily-ish uh, build, check, you checked all the boxes for solutions for overheating or running hot and nothing's worked, come along on the journey with your boy. You know what I'm saying? We're gonna see if the idea I have works. So let's get right into it. For those of you who are new or don't know, or just never really thought to think about it, um, my current radiator setup is I have a tucked Chase Bay's, uh, it's technically it's a Civic Integra is what it was labeled as, um, tucked radiator. It definitely works. Um, I'm pretty much narrowed down my specific overheating issue to being a capacity issue, which means it needs more fluid, more time for the fluid to come through for it to actually cool properly. And I'm going to take a crack at adding a second radiator. So I will be keeping my current setup. It's more or less adding to it. That's a little quick breakdown of what the current setup is. So let's go take a look at the other radiator. Hey. So what we're looking at is the private label three core uh, drag radi uh, radiator. Now, for me specifically, um, I'm gonna be mounting this in the trunk and running lines all the way back to the front. But yeah, man, this is a pretty nice, it's a pretty nice unit, man. Not gonna lie. Polish it up real nice, like, you know what I mean? So this is what I'm gonna be using as my second radiator. So, a little bit of cardboard design. I made this basically as a template to trace on the metal so I know where to cut out. I'm gonna take this and use it as a template to do that. Sheesh. Come on now. Come on up out of there. Bring your ass. Bring your ass. Do it. Do it. Do it. Come on now. There you go. Sheesh. Almost perfect. I mean, I could have made it a little tighter, but I'd rather have cut once than to deal with cutting more than once. And uh, yeah, I ain't gonna lie, that came out pretty clean. Pretty, pretty clean. Ooh, we. So I used the brackets that came with it and I basically uh, mounted, in, mounted it in here. Um, at least for now, this is how it's gonna sit. Um, and it's in there solid. It's not going nowhere. It's solid as hell, so yes. Sir, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, I may do a few more things like, uh, you know, put some rust oleum paint on the metal that I cut, keep that from rusting. So, I got the uh, fan wired up. <clears throat> I'm about to test it pretty much. I got everything kind of laid out. Um, I'll be tightened up once I know it's pulling. In the direction like I said I want the, the fan pulling it down to the ground so get ready to test it real quick yeah. yes 
she pulling down, baby. She pulling down. Well, now that I know that it works and it's pulling the direction I needed to pull, I'm gonna tighten all the wiring up. And then, uh, yeah, we in there, baby. All right, so I'm pretty much to the plumbing phase. Uh, this originally had a push style. Let me see. This one, I took this one off. Um, if you guys haven't seen my tucked radiator install, I'll, I'll put a link to that in the, in the uh, description. But uh, I went to Chase Bay's website. I got the 16A in instead of the push style. I got two of those. So one's gonna go here and the other one is going to go here. So I gotta take this one off. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna route it from, it's gonna be going from here um, down under the car to the radiator in the back. And then from the outlet of the radiator, obviously it's gonna come back and then go into the top of the tucked radiator. Man, let me tell y'all something. You gotta be an absolute fucking animal to put 16 A in line together, bruh. <laughs> like, like, dog. You really gotta be strong. Look, I didn't destroy the fucking finish on it. Or well, at least on that one. This one, is, this one actually is all right. But what? I think we got everything hooked up. I made the lines. I got them connected. I routed them from the radiator up and around. Actually, I have to I have to redo this one. This one is supposed to be on the inside, but I'll I'll fix that. So this one, run this one on the inside, and then then ran them up and I figured the best route would be up where the exhaust normally would be. So I ran them up, down, all the way up through the old exhaust tunnel and then up, up through right there. And then one, like I was explaining, goes to the filler neck and the other one straight to the radiator. <clears throat> For the past couple days, as you can see from the mess, I've tried just about everything to get this system bled with the second radiator, and uh, it ain't easy. And there's a pocket of air trapped somewhere in the system consistently, and I can't get it to bleed properly. So, shout out to my man, Mugen Ray, aka the Dark Regan. He let me uh, borrow this AirVac coolant refiller. Um, which basically the short story and short ver version of it is this tool uses uh, air uh, from a compressor to create a vacuum to basically pull all the air slash coolant out of the system and it vacuum seals it all the way um, pretty much flat um, to I guess up to what <clears throat> negative 30 pounds of pressure and with this valve system, you're able to um, use the vacuum to suck fluid back into the system, but without the air. So we're gonna try this and see if it works. <clears throat> so what we got going on here? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Did you check your defibrillator? <laughs> Wait, hold up. How you got? What's going on here? Unsuccessful. All right, so I got the system pretty much. Uh, all the way down to negative 24 on the PSI gauge, which is what uh, the tool recommends, 24. And it's not really pulling any more fluid out, mostly just air, constant air, and it's kind of staying at that same pressure. So now what I gotta do is, now what, oh Lord. Well, basically what I have to do is cut this air valve off and close 
I gotta close this valve first, then this valve, just for the air. And then, this valve, once I open it, that'll suck the coolant back into the system. Pressure is going down. It should be sucking the fluid up. Oh yeah, I can see it dropping. Oh no, I need more fluid, baby. No. Oh, holding this fucking camera. I think I just got air in it. Fuck. All right, so I'm on a test drive to see if the dual radiator core system is cranking. You know what I'm saying? And um. It's currently about 90, probably 92 degrees outside. I'm in traffic and the car's been running for probably about 10 or 15 minutes. She at 169, baby. Normally by now, I would have been overheated in this heat and in traffic. So, um, yeah, I think it's safe to say it's working. It technically hasn't even hit operating temperature yet because I think operating temperature is like 192 or something like that. But uh, yeah, I think it's safe to say the, the dual core radiator system is a success. Hey, hey, I'm happy to say that all the time, money and R&D, you know what I'm saying? Research and development went into this. Um, I'm glad to say that it worked. Um, so now I can finally drive my car literally anytime I want. Heat, cold, snow, firestorm, <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> but yeah, um, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. I know there's a lot of you out there that are in a similar situation now you have a solution to your problem. So with that being said, hit that like button for me, share it if you feel like some people can learn from the video and see that right there, that's the subscribe button. Go ahead and hit that and I'll see you guys on the next one.